Welcome. In front of me, I have the brand new OnePlus 11. There is surprisingly no 11 Pro, so this is, uh, I believe, the highest model. I, I, at least I think. But anyway, uh, today I'll go for unboxing along with a quick overview. So let's just pop it straight open and see if OnePlus is getting back into the game and good graces of of well the customers. So anyway, now I'll mention right off the bat this is the higher end model. So this has 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Never settle. Uh, I see that they're came back to the branding of Never Settle, considering there are several previous devices were a complete well, failure, and would assume that they settled. Anyway, in here we have just a stupid amount of paperwork, so I'm not even gonna take it out, just put it back in and eat it to the side. Then we get a phone. Under that we have our charger, and this is a Super VOOC charger that charges not. I'm just gonna take it off the camera just so I can see better. Yeah, I'm too blind to even see that. Hopefully my camera can do the job for me. Come on, Samsung, can you can you see the text, please? Two times zoom. Oh, oh, we're getting something. Let's see. So we're looking at nice, a hundred watt charging. So you can see it, well, almost can see it. Let me make it a little bit brighter. Hopefully now you can see it. It's barely visible. Oh, there we go, right here. A hundred watts max. I wouldn't be surprised if, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I couldn't see that in the beginning. Uh, I was expecting that it's somewhere, but oh well. Uh, it says a hundred watts right over here. So that was completely useless anyway. Uh, right here we have a cable, uh, typical OnePlus branding, of the colors at least. It's a Type-A to Type-C, and that's about all we get in the box. Uh, let's see the device. I don't really want to rip that, but it looks like there won't be any... Oh, whatever. Okay. So there is our device. I'm gonna quickly turn it on. Quickly, come on. There we go. So starting off with the display, which you should be able to see in its full glory in a second. Uh, this is a 6.7 inch display, 1440 by uh, 3216 pixels, which puts it at 525 pixels per inch. So it's one of the, uh, well, one of the more more clear displays on a market in terms of like pixel density you should have uh well, zero like pixels here visible so if you tend to pixel peep get the phone really close try it just to try to see any kind of pixelations you're not going to see that right here it's one of the more denser displays right here so you should be safe now it is also a fluid AMOLED display. What I assume they mean by fluid is that it has curved edges right here. So that's, I think, what they're referring to. It also runs at 120 hertz refresh rate, comes with Dolby Vision, HDR10+, and 500 uh, typical brightness right here, along with about 800 nits, no, 1300 nits peak brightness. So this device can get, or display, can get pretty bright. Now, just quickly finish this off, there we go. It also has 89.7% screen to body ratio and 1 billion colors. So the display right here is what I would cons consider basically star of the show. Um, and it looks really nice. Now, obviously on the camera you won't see this, but uh, this actually looks really nice. Now, additionally, just a quick mention, we do have a pre-applied little protector on the display. Uh, now, obviously, because this comes with a curved display, 
any kind of tempered glass kind of well goes out the window so you're only locked to either the curved tempered glasses with like the glue so just to kind of showcase this kind of like kind of like these ones where you need the uv light the glue and all that stuff but obviously it's not for everybody uh, so it's pretty nice that they included already a pre-applied one now moving on to the back where we will have our Hasselblad branded cameras so going over these cameras we have a 50 megapixel wide sensor with f 1.8 and PDAF uh, optical mid stabilization and so on uh, now next one is the 32 megapixel f 2.0 uh, 48 millimeters telephoto lens and then we get a 48 megapixel f 2.2 ultra wide lens and there is also looks like so okay so that's about it yeah i mean three cameras but so uh, basically it just says that it's also calibrated or color calibrated by Hasselblad just a jargon i wouldn't really consider anything about that obviously as you probably might be aware any kind of branding like this where you see Hasselblad for instance or Leica or anything like that it's just a company paying uh, paying for the rights to just slap a name and make the device look a little bit more appealing to well typical Joe in reality I don't think we're getting much here uh, associated with just Hasselblad apart from maybe the shutter sound and that's about it and obviously the filters that they come included with the camera application now, at the front, we also have a 16 megapixel wide sensor uh, with f2.5, 25 millimeter lens, and yeah, that's about it. Now, when it comes down to filming with these cameras, at least at the back, uh, we can shoot at 8K 20 frames, or oh, 24 frames, and 4K at 30, 60, and obviously 1080p 30, 60, and slow motion at 240 frames. So, pretty nice. And then at the front, we're locked at 1080p 30 frames, which is a little bit disappointing for a device at this caliber and price. You'd expect it to at least be able to do 1080p 60, like, for instance, well, all the Samsung devices. Now, um, moving on to the internals right here. Uh, we have a, like I mentioned, this specific one has 16 gigs of RAM uh, and uh, there are also additional or other options so at the very lowest end you can get 128 gigs of storage with 8 gigs of ram and then the next one which is this one is 256 gigs of storage with 12 gigs of actually no this is 12 gigs this, this has 16 so it's not even the next one so yeah 256 12 256 16 and 512 gigs 16 gigs of ram one thing to also keep in mind when you're going for the very lowest end, which is the 128 gigs of storage with 8 gigs of RAM, you're not getting the brand new storage type, which is UFS 4.0. You're only going to be getting the 3.1, which is the previous generation. And this only applies to the very lowest end, the 128 with 8 gigs of RAM. Any other ones, the 256 and up, will be getting uh, the UFS 4.0. So you should be getting a faster read and write speed on the storage itself. Now, uh, apart from the well, storages and RAM, uh, all the devices, or well, all the different variants of it, are powered by a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, so the newest processor that is on the market, basically the flagship processor that you can get right now, with, which comes included with basically any kind of devices, uh, along with newly released Samsung S23 devices. So it's running the same processor and should be virtually as powerful as as those devices are so obviously top of the shelf processor right here and uh, in terms of what it's being power powering this device it's a 5000 mAh battery so a pretty hefty cell in here for the size of this device it actually feels relatively small in hand which i never really thought i would say about a 6.7 inch phone but here i am um so yeah it's feels pretty uh, small and compact right here it's not as thick as you can see and it's really nice to have a 5000 mAh battery in here now when it comes up to the charging speed we are looking at about 50% uh, of charge in about 10 minutes with that 100 watt charger that comes included with the device so obviously really nice and just for everybody else 
for every who, party who thinks that, you know, charging speed isn't that important. Um, once you come back from, I don't know, maybe using something like a uh, Galaxy S23 with a 22 watt charger and then you move over to this one, uh, we can talk a, a, about this again. I've been using uh, this crap right here for I believe over half a year now, uh, which comes with a uh, stupid price tag and a stupid charging speed of 22 watts. And believe me when I say, for a device at this like price range, it, I would say that is unacceptable. And I honestly didn't know how big of a pain that will be till I had to start using it. And every time I take up the device after like, I don't know, maybe having it just lay on a table for a half a day, I realize, oh, my battery is close to dying. I will just plug it in. I have like 10 minutes before I have to go to work. You plug it in, 10 minutes later, you get like a couple percentage. Well done, uh, you're still kind of screwed with the battery. Uh, with this, you pop it in for 10 minutes and you're basically good to go for the rest of the day, which obviously really nice. And that is, I would, I would think, at least for me, one of the more appealing things, which is the faster, uh, fast charging for the devices. So I can just slap it in when I realize that my battery is low for just a couple minutes and have enough to get me through the day something that my current device cannot do. Now, um, quickly going on, on to like the design aesthetics right here as well. Uh, this is, what do they call this? Let's see. That is the Titan Black. Now I have also Eternal Green, which I have no clue how it looks like. Uh, but just to uh, point this, out, this one out, this is not like glassy or anything, it's more of a matte kind of finish. I don't even know how to explain this. It has really nice to the touch kind of surface. I think it's still glass. Let's see if it says that it's glass or not. Yep, so that is Gorilla Glass 5 at the back. But when you're touching this and also like just you know, the way you feel this, it doesn't feel like glass because of that like weird texture that it has. So, you can obviously... Oops, I just started to peel off my fingernails. So you can see uh, the grit right here, basically like a sandpaper, almost with a really fine grit. But it feels nice to the touch. Uh, now, uh, quickly mentioning a couple additional things. Uh, we have our microphone at the top. We have another microphone at the bottom. Uh, speaker grill right here, and I assume the other one is just the the, the one that doubles as your uh, headpiece or earpiece. We have volume rackers on the left side, right over here. Uh, we have a power button, and we have the switch to basically mute uh, or ring, vibrate, and completely uh, mute it. Now, when it comes down to haptic feedback right here, when you're flipping it, it basically pretty nice as you would expect from a flagship device oneplus usually had well, typically had a really nice uh, feeling haptic feedback in their devices and here you also have a pretty good one now we don't have any kind of headphone jack as you can see so that's a little bit disappointing and additionally you also are also not getting any kind of expendable storage i assume i'm just gonna pop it out just to be sure yep just a dual sim tray no sd card support so if you need more than the storage that you picked with your device uh, then you're kind of screwed uh, you might want to consider buying a higher end model of this device if you're planning to have more storage or need more storage just because otherwise you would run out of it and you need to just copy over data so you probably need to be running around with something like this you can just plug it in and move over the data so you free up space on it which is a little bit disappointing but to be completely honest, this is kind of the state of flagship devices where you better just splurge a little bit more on the device to have bigger storage if you need that because screw you, uh, you're not getting any kind of expendable storage even though you could. That's probably one of the things that should be said about every flagship device. You can put a SD card in here or if the manufacturer decided to add that one in but they prefer to add a higher price tag with a higher and model, which is, uh, I would still consider a little bit scammy. I don't really like the execution of well, modern flagship devices, to be completely honest. Now, to finish this off um, and just kind of go over the positive and negatives about this device, um, we have a, a, I would assume, I haven't tested the cameras just yet, a really good camera setup. It does, on the paper, look really good. 
Uh, the display right here, obviously the start of the show, uh, it's really nice to look at, looks really nice. One thing that I also like about OnePlus in general is their little switch right here that allows you to just flip between silent, uh, vibrate and just a normal ring mode. It's a nice switch, it works, uh, it's kind of a copy of iPhones but it's one of those things that I would consider a good copy of it. Uh, the display 120 Hz, uh, just basically packed display right here, it's really nice. Uh, one of the better ones on uh, flagship devices. And the build quality right here also feels nice, especially with that glass back. It, it might seem a little bit weird that when I compared it to sandpaper, but it, I don't know how else to describe it, but it feels nice in hand. Uh, obviously your phone won't be slipping out of your hand with this, which is uh, pretty nice. Also should be laying on certain surfaces a little bit better than some like fully glass devices. And lastly, the battery size in here with, it, with the charging speed and the charger that comes provided, also a super nice thing to have. Now when it comes into things that I don't like, I honestly can't really think about anything right here. Maybe just the camera at the front that comes with uh, well, 16 megapixels and shoot only at 1080p 30 frames. So that might be a little bit disappointing to some people, uh, so I do want to point it out. Other than that, uh, another negative, which I don't know if I can really classify this as a negative, is the lack of SD card support. Um, and that's, like I said, I, I'm being nitpicky about this one no flagship device uh, from like higher brands like Huawei, uh, Samsung, iPhones or anything like that come with the ability to put in an SD card. So I'm just being nitpicky here. It would be nice to see it. Obviously any kind of manufacturer could add it, but they don't. Uh, obviously for well, monetary reasons. And that's about all I have to say. I don't really see any like glaring problems with this device uh, at the moment. One thing that I'll mention, which I haven't checked out really, uh, or haven't really looked into it, was I know that the uh, OnePlus uh, pad that they came out with, the f their first tablet, came out with some absolute bullshit uh, thing where if you swap out the battery, that basically the battery will not work. And I honestly hope that this is not the case right here. If it is, that, it, that would be one of the biggest drawbacks of this device because as you probably know, battery in the device, no matter if you're using it or how you're using it, the battery, battery will always just deteriorate in quality. Even if you're trying to preserve it as much as you can, the lithium ion batteries tend to just naturally lose its capacity just by not doing literally anything. So that's one of the things that you would need to swap out if you like it or not at some point after a couple of years. And obviously they want you to either send the device to their uh, their like dedicated place, which is uh, somewhere in India where they have their like headquarters uh, for you to be able to swap your battery because you can't just buy a battery online and do it yourself or go to like some phone service that is near you. No, no, no. When you put that battery in, uh, the device stops working. So yeah, I like I said, I don't know if this is a thing right here. If it is, I would just straight up tell you to not buy this device in general because that is not something that in the future is a feasible uh, strategy. And I don't want to see this in general like in any other device. So just by that, uh, I'm kind of trying to hate on this, on this uh, like logic. And if they put that in here, just screw this device. You have other options that don't try to be as greedy as uh, as OnePlus with their certainly uh, OnePlus pods. Uh, if it's in this device, again, just skip it. If it's not, uh, I guess think about it. Obviously, if you already got the device, it's a little bit too late. Uh, so in general, for everybody who already got this device, and generally, uh, just to kind of finish this off, it's a, all in all, it's a nice device obviously a flagship device so I have no grapes right here it is pretty well well designed for a flagship device I don't really see any glaring problems with it like I would with some other devices uh, specifically just picking Samsung right here they tend to be the uh, kings at just trying to screw over their customers with a premium price for not so premium device this one here has basically everything that you expect from a flagship device 
So anyway, with this being said, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and thanks for watching.